Hello and welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have some great things out of the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence to talk to you about. What are we going to talk about? We're going to dive into the latest coming out of Apple where they released the M1 Apple Silicon chip. And this has got some great benefits for uh, machine learning. According to them, uh, I've not purchased one of these yet, but I've read a lot of articles about what this will mean for the world of machine learning and if people are actually going to want to use Apple products for training machine learning models. So first, I want to cover this uh, article coming out of Apple themselves, their newsroom. So... Essentially, they're listing the features of the M1 chip. And this thing seems pretty awesome based on what I've seen so far. Um, got a lot of new features. They claim it's their fastest chip. It's got an awesome picture of, the, uh, of their, their chip. So it's got uh, 5 nanometer technology, which is definitely cutting edge compared to other... Uh, lithography processes that are out there. Uh, it's got a lot of cool features on there too. So in addition to it being an eight core processor, it's got a 16 core neural engine. And that is why we are talking about this on an AI video. The neural engine is supposed to operate a lot like a tensor processing unit. So those are also known as TPUs, and these specialize in doing very high volume of tensor operations, which aren't necessarily that complex on their own, but you want to be able to really have a high throughput of these operations to be able to train models fast, and that's what this neural engine is supposed to accomplish. Um, so it's got other benefits, um, so it's supposed to be one of their most powerful CPUs so far. So they really, before they released Apple Silicon, they really wanted to make sure it would beat <laughs> their previous products. Uh, so it appears to do that. Let's skip down to what we're interested in is, is this a benefit for machine learning? And where is that section? We're getting there. Man, they are they are good at marketing, I gotta say. <laughs> Just kind of reading about this already has me wanting one of these these new MacBooks. I, ha I have a 2015 MacBook and it's amazing, but man, these new ones look amazing in these, these marketing materials. Anyways, staying on task, machine learning, right? Machine learning, this is about machine learning, artificial intelligence, things along, along that line. This was an interesting view. Um, so they're showing the neural mix uh, software program here, and they're talking about how many operations it can perform per second. I mean, that, of course, that sounds like a lot. What does it? What does it really mean in terms of training a model in practice? That's probably what most people care about. <laughs> you know, because these these operations that they're they're trying to uh, kind of report here doesn't exactly translate into how fast is my model going to train when I'm when I'm typing this into TensorFlow. So they claim that it allows 15x faster machine learning performance, though I believe they are comparing this against their previous MacBook products, and their previous MacBook products were not good. <laughs> so uh, not good at training machine learning models. Um, I should clarify. I, I think other than machine learning, I think MacBooks are, are state of the art. They're the best user experience out of any laptop I've ever used, but they're not used in the machine learning world for a reason. And that is because they lack the hardware. They lack the hardware to be able to train, uh, train these models. Uh, Mac is not known for having great GPUs, historically, GPUs are how you most efficiently, uh, well, until kind of the advent of the, the tensor processing unit, uh, were kind of known as the, the gold standard for training neural networks. 
Um, but clearly Apple's trying to get into this arena and they're trying to uh, maybe not <laughs> win the race, not, not train models the fastest, but try to win over a couple machine learner machine learning practitioners um, to start using their products. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Cause you don't, if you're thinking of training a machine learning model, you're probably not thinking of getting a laptop to do that. You kind of need either. You're going to want to go to the cloud. You're either going to want to train it in AWS. So you're going to want to spread it out, out across clusters use something like spark, or you're going to want to get a beastly workstation with, you know, a lot of hardware, a lot of cooling, most likely, because these these models train for hours sometimes. Um, sometimes if I'm doing a Kaggle competition, for example, I'll train models overnight. So, you know, these, if you're doing really serious machine learning, you probably do not want a laptop to be your, your daily driver. <laughs> I think it's probably great for someone kind of toying around with TensorFlow. Um, maybe, maybe, learn, maybe doing an introductory class in TensorFlow. But if you're trying to win a Kaggle competition um, with a MacBook, it will be an uphill battle for you. Let's just say that. Um, so let's keep moving here. So, uh, yeah, so they have all these neural cores, they also have, uh, where was the article? Where was the article I was talking about? They have this, this new software called uh, ML Compute. So this is going to be their version of kind of TensorFlow that's gonna allow it to run most efficiently on their, their MacBook. And uh, that's something we have not seen before. It's going to allow your MacBook to really use things other than the CPU, which is what it was limited to in previous generations of uh, the MacBook and TensorFlow. So hoping that people are gonna start maybe exploring Apple products a little bit more. Um, this is a really cool article where they essentially are testing machine learning performance against uh, other Max, so they, they tested against a, a pretty uh, pretty beastly system, uh, the a pretty CPU intensive system. So the Intel Xeon Mac Pro, uh, thirty two gigabytes of RAM, uh, and it has AMD graphics card. It performed a lot better than this system. So you see these specs and. You say, wow, this new MacBook is amazing, right? But like I said, Mac Mac products are not known for having great graphics cards typically. And that is what is going to determine your performance in training a neural network. So these new neural engines, they sound really good for training uh, neural networks. Um, definitely better than any other uh, Mac product that we've seen. It's cool that they're they're making this transition into uh, machine learning. Uh, last article I wanted to talk about was coming out of Apple machine learning research. So they're looking at ML compute. It's that framework that I was talking about. It's going to allow them to kind of take advantage of the GPU and also I think kind of expand into using those neural engines and improve performance that way. Um, so here they show some comparisons. I like seeing charts. How does this compare to previous versions of the MacBook at least? And what they're showing here uh, is training time and how long it's gonna to take to train a single batch of training samples. So as you can see in the orange here, is the M1 and the gray and yellow are previous generations of the Mac, um, so Intel, Silicon. And you can see the Mac version takes, it, it, it trains a batch of samples a lot more quickly. So that's really cool to see. 
Uh, they say it can be 7x faster with this new M1 chip. Um, so, yeah, what does everyone think about <laughs> using Max for machine learning? Um, like I said, my opinion is that you're probably not going to be doing hardcore machine learning research on a MacBook. Um, your life would be a lot easier if you had kind of a more desktop workstation that had maybe one really good GPU or maybe two all right GPUs and SLI. Um, or better yet, you're going to use the cloud and give Amazon a huge check to train your model. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, as a machine learning lover and enthusiast, I think this is great. I hope this becomes standard fare for uh, kind of processing chips it is starting to include units that are going to help train neural networks. So I, I hope that Intel and the next generation of Intel product, we start to see something that'll be able to match this. We're going to see uh, uh, these tensor processing units start to kind of make their way onto these, these new uh, computer chips. And I think that'd be really, really cool and really exciting for the world of machine learning. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, give this give this video a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'll definitely be back very soon with more machine learning and artificial intelligence content. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.